How's it going everyone? My name is Mia and today I'm going to be showing you how to use Polaroid's brand new analog camera, the Polaroid i2. I'm going to be breaking down all the ins and outs as well as explaining each manual control setting so that you could best utilize your own Polaroid i2. The Polaroid i2 is Polaroid's first camera with built-in manual control settings. It's Polaroid's sharpest lens yet. The Polaroid i2 is the ultimate crafting tool for anybody who's passionate about photography and also really want to experiment into the world of instant film. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started. So when you first get your Polaroid i2 in the mail, it's gonna come in a nice box like this. Go ahead and open it. It's just filled with a lot of wonderful surprises, like this quick start guided tip sheet, which contains the first steps on how to use the Polaroid i2 camera. It also comes with its very own nice handy dandy hand strap and its very own USB-C cable. Once you unbox the actual camera itself, you will notice that it just feels so nice and premium in your hands. Go ahead and take off the lens cap. This box can also be used to store your Polaroid photos inside. I recommend you charge the camera before actually using it. You're gonna go ahead and plug it in with the USB-C cable. To turn it on and off, you're gonna press this little button right here. Now, when you first turn it on, it will ask you to select the language of your choice and go ahead and press OK. Now, for the film, you can use Polaroid's iType film, which is the most affordable because there are no batteries inside of it. You can also shoot with Polaroid 600 film, which offers a lot of many unique special editions, or even SX70 film. You always want to shoot your film within 12 months of the production date for best results. Film should always be stored in a very nice and cool place. A refrigerator is perfect, but please do not put it in a freezer. Once you've opened up your Polaroid film pack, you're going to go ahead and open up the sliding doors on your Polaroid i2. You can achieve that by this little button on the side. Hold the film pack by its side, go ahead and insert it into the camera, give it a slight push, and it should click. Once you've pushed it in and closed the door, the dark slide's gonna eject from underneath the film shield. That little film shield actually protects the film from light while it's ejecting. Once it's out, go ahead and remove it and let the film shield roll back. So now you're pretty much almost set. Let's start talking about some of the camera settings. <laughs> So one of the first things you'll see is that it has this internal viewfinder as well as an external display with exposure meters in both of them. This is perfect for being able to see all of the values that you're shooting, even just shooting in a studio. You can also turn the flash on or off. All right, now it's time to go through each of the six different shoot modes of the Polaroid i2. So when you turn it on, you're gonna be able to see a lot of different icons. They all stand for different modes of the camera settings. First, we have auto mode. This is the camera's automatic shooting settings so that it changes your aperture and shutter speeds for you. Then we have aperture priority mode. This mode is nice because you can manually select any kind of aperture that you'd like and then it adjusts all of the other settings for you. Now this is shutter priority mode. Similar to aperture priority, all you have to do is manually select which shutter speed that you want to shoot in and then it adjusts all the other settings for you. And now we have manual mode. This mode allows you to have full control over the Polaroid i2 camera. You can adjust both your shutter speed and aperture to whatever setting that you want. Now we have multiple exposure mode. Now multiple exposure mode is especially unique because it allows you to get multiple frames on one Polaroid photo. And now we have self timer. Now this mode is so helpful if you want to go and set this up on a tripod and try some self portraits. <laughs> Now shooting in automatic mode will allow this camera to do most of the work for you. Because this mode is fully automatic, that means that both your shutter speed and aperture will be changing automatically. Okay, now let me explain my hold, aim, and frame rule. When you're gonna take your first Polaroid photo, there are a few things that you wanna look out for. First, you're gonna wanna make sure that your camera is nice and steady, and make sure that the subjects you're shooting are holding still. Hold the camera like this, or like this, the main rule is that you're never accidentally covering the lens or preventing the film from coming out correctly. Now it's time to really take this outside so I can show you guys how this works. Next is focus. The lens can detect your subject's distance and auto adjust the lens to the perfect focus distance, which then enables you to get a nice and sharp image. It's always helpful to know your focus distance to make sure that what you're shooting is actually gonna stay in focus. Thank you. That means ideally you wanna be 40 centimeters or 1.3 feet away from your subject. While looking inside of the viewfinder, you're gonna notice that there are two squares within it. When you're shooting landscapes and things that are more than 26 feet away, you can compose your shot using the entire frame. However, when you're shooting a subject that is actually closer than 26 six feet away, you're gonna wanna compose your image within the smaller square towards the right of the frame. All right, so now let's talk about focusing with the camera and the viewfinder. When taking a photo, you're gonna wanna half press the shutter button and then compose your shot. Your focus point is gonna be in the middle of the little brackets. You're gonna wanna aim the center of the brackets towards the subject that you wanna keep in focus. When you half press the shutter button, the focus and subject distance are gonna be shown on the inner and outer displays. When it's half pressed down, it auto locks the exposure and focuses on the subject. For an in-focus centered shot, you'll wanna keep 
keep focused on where you'd like it to be first, keep the button half pressed, and then re-aim and compose your frame. Then press it fully to actually take the photo. Because you are in auto mode, the camera will try to automatically select the correct exposure for you depending on your lighting conditions. But if you do want to adjust it, all you have to do is switch the exposure dial up or down to get your own perfect exposure. Which leads me to my next topic, that is light. Without the right lighting conditions, your photos can either be way too light or way too dark. Lighting is the key essential to how your Polaroid photo will turn out. Now, sunlight is usually recommended because it is the most versatile, but that's not to say that you can't take stunning photos anywhere else. Like inside of a room, which will typically give your photos a nice, beautiful yellow look, whereas a white fluorescent office room will give your photos a much more greener tint. But that's where it gets really fun, and as always, it's all trial and error, and it's all about experimenting. As always, don't hesitate to move your subjects around or put yourself in awkward places to get your perfect shot. Now, if you are shooting in a bit of a darker environment, then you might notice a little shaky hand symbol. That means that the shutter speed is just a little bit too slow. So what you'll wanna do is crank up your exposure or aperture to properly expose for your darker environment. If you're shooting in darker environments, we recommend you use a tripod or keep it on something flat and steady to avoid any kind of motion blur. If you do get motion blur, that's totally fine. Don't worry, we've all been there. So if you ever need to quickly fix your lighting scenario, we recommend you just turn on the flash. All you wanna do is turn it on with the button right here, aim it at your subject that is within eight feet. Probably also wanna place your subject by a cool background, that way you make sure everything is properly illuminated. Time to shoot your shot, like actually. Let's go shoot. So now that we've taken our first photo, you'll see that the Polaroid photo just came out from the bottom of the shield. That little shield helps protect the Polaroid photo from any light before it's done developing. Remove the photo and let the film shield roll right back, easy. Some people like to say, shake it like a Polaroid picture, but please do not ever do this. You can shake other things, but please do not shake your Polaroid photos. Sorry to break it to you, but it can cause your photo from being processed incorrectly by bending it and damaging it. Just leave it face down, let it be. You have to let it sit for at least 15 minutes if it's color film, 10 minutes for black and white. <laughs> Aperture priority is that feature that allows you to pick whatever f-stop, also known as your aperture, to whatever you want. If you're into shooting landscapes, then we recommend you shoot at an f45 or 64 on the Polaroid i2. But if you're more into shooting portraits with that nice blurry background, which is also known as bokeh or depth of field, then you might wanna shoot at something like an F8. The Polaroid i2 has a wide variety of apertures to choose from. Because you are in aperture priority mode, your shutter speed will be changing automatically depending on where and what you're shooting. All right, so now it's time to take this outside and show you guys some examples. So now I'm outside at a beautiful sunny location here with my wonderful friends Graciela and Octavio. I'm gonna be showing you guys how different my depth of field starts to change depending if I'm shooting an F8 or F64 using the aperture priority mode. Let's go shoot and I'll show you guys some of the images. It's similar to the aperture priority mode, but this time we're controlling the shutter speed. This setting allows you to select whatever shutter speed we desire to shoot in, then the camera will detect the rest of the settings for you. Now, shutter speed is the amount of time that your shutter stays open while taking a photo. The slower the number, the more light that enters the sensor. But the faster the shutter means that there's less light that enters the sensor. What you'll wanna do now to get the best image that you can is use the first photo that you just shot as a reference. Was it way too dark or was it too bright? If it is on the darker side, then what you wanna do is bump your shutter speed to something longer, like 30th of a second, or to however long you think you'll need. Don't forget your handy dandy tripod when you're shooting in low light scenarios. If you're a little bit shaky, then your photos might be a little bit more on the blurry side. This could also be a very stylistic choice. If you wanna capture moving subjects with a motion blur, it's all up to you. Go ahead and half press the shutter button, frame your composition, and take your shot. <laughs> And now one of my favorite features about the new Polaroid i2 camera and what really makes this camera especially unique compared to any other instant Polaroid camera out there is this brand new manual mode. Photographers, you're gonna love this. This all new manual mode will give you complete access to controlling every aspect of your Polaroid camera from your shutter speed to your aperture. Another incredible feature about this camera is this 2.5 millimeter external flash sync port. Just when it couldn't get any better, it did. This is super helpful for any photographer who wants to work with any kind of flash. This built-in manual control setting gives you the ability to experiment and really push your creativity to the limits. Another great feature about the Polaroid i2 is that you can also control each setting through the app on your phone. All you have to do is go ahead, install the app onto your phone, open it up, turn both of them on, and your camera should sync automatically straight onto the app. Once it's done syncing, you'll be able to access all the camera settings and control it remotely through your mobile device. 
Now this feature is really fun if you're more into experimental type of photo techniques. This mode is so cool because it allows you to take more than one shot on one frame of Polaroid film. The Polaroid i2 now allows you to choose between two to four exposures on one photo. The camera will calculate the correct exposure given for the number of shots that you want to take on one frame. Like I stated previously, the exposure is locked by half pressing down the shutter button before actually taking your photo. Now multiple exposures are a great way to really get funky and experiment with your photography. The main rule here is that your first photo should be a bit underexposed and typically you'd want to shoot something with a bit of backlight. Don't be alarmed though if it does seem like your photo is way too dark. Try to remember the lightest part and the darkest part of your photos. Be sure to place something inside of the dark area of your first image to properly expose the light again. Eventually, it's gonna lead to an overall lighter image due to the multiple exposures being put over one actual frame. So in this final chapter, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to properly take care of your Polaroid i2 camera. So let's just say you finish shooting an entire day of instant film. Before you put this camera away, you wanna make sure you count how many photos you actually have left. Each pack of Polaroid film has eight shots in it. Let's just say you had about two left, or you finished shooting the entire pack. If you finished up shooting an entire pack, you wanna properly discard your film pack like so. You pull it out like this, and now your Polaroid i2 has no more film in it. When you're done finishing an entire pack, you always wanna make sure that you properly dispose any film cartridges depending on where you live. Ideally, you would want to put the lens cap back on to protect it from getting damaged. You ideally would want to store this in a nice room temperature environment. Every now and then, you're also gonna wanna be cleaning the rollers. This allows the chemistry to just spread correctly between the negative and the positive parts of the photo. If they're kinda dirty, then you're gonna notice some repetitive dots throughout your picture. We do recommend that you give it a nice little wipe with something like a microfiber cloth between every two to three different packs, even if they do look perfectly clean. So after a while of experimenting and shooting a variety of different packs of Polaroid film, it is very important to store your developed photos in a nice, cool, and dry place for about 30 days after you've shot them. After this, then it is is safe for you to place them in things like photo albums or photo frames. Also want to avoid putting them under direct sunlight to prevent them from fading due to the UV rays. Another super duper fun and exciting part which we all love is scanning and sharing your photos online. There is a very helpful scanner on the Polaroid app itself. All you have to do is open up the Polaroid app Go ahead and click the scan option and make sure there are no reflections while actually shooting your photo. Go ahead, snap it, and that's it. All right, guys, and we did it. We've made it this far. I really, really hope that this video helped you guys get more familiar with your Polaroid i2. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you guys ever have any more questions at all, then the Polaroid customer service team is always here to help. Be sure to check out Polaroid.com for more additional information and tips. Finally, we cannot wait for you to unleash a new level of your own creativity with the brand new Polaroid i2 camera.